And Mr. Mack tells you that actually, yes, the peppers are going and it's going to be about 28 degrees. You wonder if you are actually going to freeze while you're playing that trumpet and be able, somebody's going to have to pour water over Sam Ivey to get him free from that mouthpiece. Um, he, I asked him if he was a little bit cold on Friday, and he, as tough as he is, because I've seen him leading the peppers at other games, he said, yeah, actually, it was a little chilly that night. So, you may not know that Sam Ivey has a, something that he does outside school that is a service-oriented project. It comes from a passion deep inside him, and I want him to be the one who tells you all about it. So please welcome to the microphone, Sam Ivey. Um, like Mr. Mackay said, uh, over the course of the past three years, I have volunteered with Maine Army National Guard to play TAPS live at military funerals. For those of you who don't know what TAPS is or really anything about it, TAPS itself is a 24-note review recall that signifies the end of the day at military installations or Boy Scout camps. It usually met, means lights out, go to bed. That's it. Um, but TAPS itself has a lot more of a symbolic meaning to it at military funerals, which I'll dive into in a little bit. When I say bugle, how many of you, by show of hands in here, know what a bugle is? Alright, and when I say bugles, I do not mean the chips. That's not, not quite what I mean. This is a bugle. As you can see, it's relatively small. Mine is rather old and a bit dented, but just adds character to it. The bugle itself, compared to a trumpet, has no vowels, or as what most of you would call buttons. Uh, um, the vowels, most of the one picture here is just one pipe, mine here is two. And compared to a trumpet, it's a lot smaller. The trumpet itself, like I said, has the three vowels. The three vowels allow, uh, allow the trumpet player to hit different notes that the bugle can. The bugle itself dates back for centuries, actually. They were, they were originally made out of hollowed out animal horns, dating all the way back to ancient Rome, because that's about as far back as I want to dig. <laughs> back then, they weren't really used for what we know them to be now. Bugles then, like I said, were animal horns, and for all of my Latin scholars out there, the bugle itself is derived from the Latin root buculus. Bugles back then were used by hunters to communicate during a hunt, or were used when out clergy or nobility that were being introduced. Um, the first recorded military use of a bugle was in Hanover in the year 1758, which uh, at the time was still part of the Holy Roman Empire. It was quickly adopted by English foot regiments and spread throughout the entirety of Europe, seeing a lot of effectiveness in during the uh, during all of the Napoleonic Wars. Jumping to the American Civil War, uh, we had adopt the U.S. at the time had adopted a lot of the French calls, given that we weren't quite so chummy with the British at the time. And back then, the French had their own version of taps. Taps then was a lot different than what from from what we know it now. It was still the light out call, but one Union general in particular, General Daniel Butterfield, wasn't very impressed with this call. Butterfield wanted the piece to be a lot more melodious. He wanted it to be a lot more soothing for the troops as a real good night call. At the end of the day, you're done, go to sleep. Butterfield rewrote his piece in the later, later years of the Civil War, and the first night he had his people to play it, he, he purposely set him on top of the hill so that way the neighboring units would hear him. The next day, to his good luck, um, the, na the neighboring regiment sent in their viewers to find to get a copy of this music. It was quickly adopted throughout the entirety of the Union Army and even parts of the, mil of the Confederate military before the war ended. TAPS itself became an official call at the end of the Civil War. Starting about three years ago, like I said, over the course of the past three years, I have performed at a total of 34 different military ceremonies, spanning from about Millinocket all the way down to Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. After performing at my 21st ceremony, I was awarded from the Maine National Guard a challenge coin, 
that they gave out to their honor guard after performing at 21 services, symbolic of the 21 gun salute. It was, it was really quite the honor to receive this coin because in total, only about 50 people in the entirety of the United States have this coin. Only people with the main National Honor Guard have this coin. It was also to my great fortune in the fall of 2017, I stumbled across a wonderful organization called 100 Nights of Taps. 100 Nights of Taps is run by three different programs, the Gettysburg National Park, Lincoln Fellowship, and Taps for Veterans. All three are amazing organizations. Essentially what they organize, spanning from Memorial Day to Veterans Day, every single night they have one person volunteer to go and play taps at the Gettysburg National Monument in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. To, to recognize all the fallen soldiers who fought for our freedom and for the freedom of everyone here in the United States. I had the amazing fortune of going and playing back in the summer of 2018 and it was, it was an incredible experience. It was a wonderful day. We couldn't, it, was, it was really fantastic. It's something that's going to stick with me for the rest of my life. I was also awarded with another challenge coin, the 100 Nights of Taps Gettysburg 2018 challenge coin. And it, was, it really is such an honor to go out and do this sort of thing. And the reason I bring this all up today is because starting last year, I started a program with the thanks of Al McIntyre for being able to purchase four shiny, brand spanking new military grade bugles for the school. I started a program here at John Baptist. I'm calling the John Baptist Memorial High School Bugle Corps, where I am teaching kids such as myself and anyone in this crowd who would be willing to, to learn how to play taps and essentially do what I'm doing. Go taking time out of their day, taking time out of their week, whatever it is they're doing, going to these ceremonies and playing taps for these families. It really leaves an, an amazing impact with these families. This is really the last thing this family and this soldier hears before being put to rest. Taps itself is it really leaves an impact, knowing these families knowing that this young person taking time out of their day to learn this piece, to practice this piece until they have it right, following the proper techniques, take all this time, go out and play taps for a family that they don't even know. It, it really is impactful for these families, and it leaves quite the mark on them. And I'd like, I'm very proud to say that starting last week, the number of viewers we've had has doubled from just myself Two, and I'd like everyone to join me in giving a round of applause for Matthew Hafner as he please stand up for being here. <laughs> he performed at his first service this weekend at Surrey down in down by the coast. To close out today's ceremony, I really this is also another fact that a lot of people don't know about Daniel Butterfield, is that he also wrote lyrics to go with taps. And I'm gonna put these lyrics up here and I'm going to play taps up on the stage. And, and I'd like everyone in here to think of someone in their family that has passed away, whether it be a veteran or not a veteran. Just think of someone you passed away and read these lyrics with Pete as I play this piece, because it's quite, it's very impactful. 